This is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro. And this that I have here is the 14 inch version with the Intel i5. And this is the IdeaPad 5i Pro. And this is the 16 inch model that I have here also with the Intel i5. However, this guy is available in a 14 inch form factor as well. That is not yet available to order anywhere in the Nordic region where I am at. So the only one I could get my hands on was the 16 inch Intel version. I will be comparing them side by side and I will try as much as possible to compare the things that are specific to these SKUs that I have here and that are specific to all the models, like the thing they share between all the different SKUs that are available out there. The specifications I have here is the 1135G7 together with just the Intel XE graphics. 16 gigabytes of RAM, clocked at 4266 megahertz, so that is LPDDR4 XRAM. This guy has a fast 512 gigabyte SSD. The specification I have here is the i5-11300H CPU. So that is a CPU that gets a little bit more power delivered to it, together with the NVIDIA MX450 graphics. So a bit more powerful graphics in the IdeaPad compared to the graphics in the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. This guy has 16 gigabytes of RAM, however it is clocked in 3200 megahertz, so that is DDR4 RAM. This guy also has a 512 gigabyte SSD. Keep in mind, I have been running these guys with the Intel models only, as these are the only ones that have been available in my region. However, whenever the AMD versions are available of this laptop, I would really recommend to have a look at those. The Yoga Slim 7 Pro should be available both with a 5600H, a 5800H and a 5900HX processor from AMD. And the IdeaPad 5i Pro should be available with both a 5600H and a 5800H CPU. Those CPUs are really powerful, especially if you're using your laptop for multi-core tasks. So a test like Cinebench R20 or Cinebench R23 that tests out multi-core performance will run the laptop at way higher scores when you choose one of the AMD versions. However, for single core tasks, for example, word processing or Excel sheets, it might actually be better performance in these guys with the Intel CPUs. And one thing that a lot of people are wondering about, because these are both branded as pro laptops, is upgradability. So let's cover that first of all. These laptops are not that upgradable. For being called pro models, I would wish there would be a little bit more upgradability in them. In both of them, you are able to upgrade the built-in SSD, but there is no extra slot for a second SSD, so you have to replace the one that is already in there. There is no upgradable RAM in either the Yoga or the IdeaPad, so you have to stick with the amount of RAM that you get when you purchase the laptop. Looking at the top side here, you can see that the corners of the IdeaPad 5i Pro are slightly more rounded than the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. There is a bit more branding on the Yoga with this little Yoga sticker up here. The material of the IdeaPad 5i Pro is slightly different compared to the Yoga. This mainly shows off in the fact that it picks up a bit more fingerprints than the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. The bottom part of the two laptops are also pretty similar. The ventilation grills are relatively big on both and there are bottom firing speakers. There are also the little ledge in the back and those two rubber feet in the front to lift the laptops up a little bit from the table where it's placed on. When looking at the left hand side of the laptops you can see that the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro has two full Thunderbolt ports on the left hand side. The IdeaPad 5i Pro has one USB-C port for charging that supports power in as well as USB 2.0. So that is a pretty skimped USB-C port which I find to be a big pity. I really wish there would have been two full-fledged Thunderbolt 4 ports on the IdeaPad 5i Pro as well. Then on the IdeaPad you've got the HDMI port which is a 1.4 HDMI port. After that you've got the full-fledged Thunderbolt 4 port together with a microphone headphone combo jack. 
On the right hand side, on the Yoga Slim 7i Pro, you have the headphone microphone combo jack together with a full speed USB A port. On the IdeaPad 5i Pro, you've got a pretty fast full size SD card reader together with two USB A ports. So this is significantly different between the two devices and for me it's not obvious which one is the best here. You've of course got two USB-A ports and the SD card reader on the IdeaPad 5i Pro, also in the 14 inch version. And you've also got the HDMI port. However, as it's lacking those two Thunderbolt ports, it kind of misses the point for my personal use case, where I very often plug into two individual monitors when I'm on the road, so I really prefer having two USB-Cs with monitor out for my work computer. However, if you work with content creation, it's invaluable to have both the SD card reader together with those two USB-A ports to be able to connect your different peripherals. Both the IdeaPad 5i Pro and the Yoga Slim 7i Pro can easily be opened with one hand. They have got this feature where they log you in automatically. Now I'm quite far away from the computers, so they don't seem to really pick up my face in this distance. Oh yeah, there you can see the Yoga picking up my face. And there you can see the IdeaPad 5i Pro picking up my face as well. When coming into this point, you can see the two screens on these laptops. And here is a really interesting difference, as well as a bit of a similarity. Because both of the screens are actually amazing, but they are amazing in their own different ways. The IdeaPad 5i Pro has a 2.5K screen, which is matte, got 350 nits of brightness, 100% sRGB color coverage and a 120 Hz refresh rate. The Yoga Slim 7i Pro has a 2.8K panel, which is a little bit more pixels compared to the IdeaPad 5i Pro. This guy has a 400 nit glossy panel, so there's a little bit more brightness, but it also needs a bit more brightness to be able to make it as visible as possible, especially in lower light scenarios. The Yoga Slim 7i Pro has a 90 Hz refresh rate in this SKU. So this is also a bit of a higher refresh rate panel, which is amazing in terms of gaming, but actually for the fluidity of the overall Windows experience as well. Both of these laptops are in the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which I really enjoy. I think it's actually my favorite aspect ratio of the ones I've tried, which are 16 by 9, 16 by 10, 3 by 2. 16 by 10 is a good middle ground between having media consumption and a little bit of a wider screen for that, but also having a bit of a higher screen to be able to perform more productivity tasks and have a bit more space for, for example, documents or reading and similar tasks. The 14-inch version of the IdeaPad 5i Pro has a very similar panel as this 16 version that I have here. So that is also a 120Hz screen with a 2.5K resolution. Keep in mind though that these laptops come in a variety of different SKUs. So just because I have these models here, it doesn't mean that the one you are looking at have exactly the same spec. So please double check that so you make sure you get the kind of model that you actually want. I know, for example, there are matte panels available with the Yoga Slim 7i Pro, however, only in a 60 Hz variant. If I get to choose my favorite between the two panels, I will definitely go for the IdeaPad 5i Pro. The matte panel with 350 nits and 120 Hz in the 16x10 aspect ratio is the perfect combination. However, the Yoga Slim 7i Pro panel is also very, very good. So this is not a big win by any means, but I do enjoy the IdeaPad panel a bit more than the Yoga. The trackpads of these laptops are incredibly similar. However, I think the version that I got in my Yoga Slim 7i Pro is a bit of a bad example because it's got that rattling noise when you do the soft click on it. 
And I don't think it's supposed to be like that. So I think this is probably a bad unit, which is very common. It is very, very common to get bad quality control with Lenovo laptops. So that is one thing to keep in mind when you are checking your new laptop. The IdeaPad 5i Pro has no rattling noise whatsoever. And uh, it is a very comfortable, very responsive, and very nice feeling trackpad overall. Really one of the big pluses of using this laptop. The 16-inch version of IdeaPad 5i Pro has a numerical keypad together with full-size arrow keys. This is something that will not come in the 14-inch version, so keep that in mind. It is only in the 16-inch version you will have that full-size arrow key plus numpad setup. When listening to the typing test with the two laptops, you can hear that the Yoga Slim 7i Pro actually has a bit of a clickier feedback in the keys. So the IdeaPad 5i Pro has a very, very silent keyboard, very silent touch to each keystroke that you do. But the Yoga Slim 7i Pro has a little bit more of a clicky feedback to each stroke. If you get the same size, the weight is very similar between the two units. If you're looking at the 14-inch Yoga versus the IdeaPad 5i Pro 16-inch, this guy is around 1.4 kilograms and this guy is around 1.9 kilograms. This guy in a 14-inch form factor is also around 1.4 kilograms and it has the same kind of port setup, although in the 14-inch form factor, of course, a smaller battery compared to the 16-inch version. These units are really silent to use. There is absolutely no coil wine in either my Yoga or in my IdeaPad. And they also run really silent on idle mode. However, in the IdeaPad, which runs pretty hot, the fans tend to spin up quite quickly when you start using it for some kind of a little bit more intense task. The battery life is pretty interesting here, because the 14-inch versions have a 56 watt-hour battery, while the 16-inch version of the IdeaPad has a 75 watt-hour battery. So this guy has a pretty good battery life, and the combination of the bigger battery, together with the matte screen that allows you to use it at a lower screen brightness, is a pretty good combo. The smaller battery in the Yoga, in combination with the glossy screen that requires you to run a pretty high brightness setting in the screen, is making the battery life one of the weaker points of the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. Both of these laptops have higher refresh rate screens, which is also something that consumes quite a lot of battery power. If you want to max out on battery power, I would turn off those higher refresh rates and keep the screen at 60Hz. And this is something you can easily do in advanced screen settings in Windows. In terms of temperatures, these are pretty different units. This comes with a 15 watt CPU, the 1135G7. And in all my tests I've done of it, it has run really cool even when maxing out the GPU and the CPU while gaming. It is running at really nice cool states even when you push it to the max. That is very different with the IdeaPad 5i Pro with this 35 watt CPU that it has together with the MX450 graphics. When I've done my performance tests with this guy, it has run really hot. And it even runs pretty hot to the touch, especially around the middle part of the keyboard here. Which is really not a part that you want to be very hot in a laptop. If you want to see the specific performance stats of these two laptops, I would urge you to go to the different reviews that I have made of them. I will be linking to them in the description below. But I will tell you that these guys in Cinebench R23 run relatively similar. The 1135G7 runs around 5200 points, while the 11300H CPU runs around 5600 points. That is also why this guy runs significantly hotter than the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. 
So there is not a huge difference in terms of CPU performance between these two units. But then you've got the MX450 that gives a pretty decent boost to graphics when you're using the IdeaPad 5i Pro compared to the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. The SSD speed is very very similar and fast in both of the laptops, around 3500 read and 2700 write. And they both run equally fast when you are plugged in as when you are running them on battery power. Let's have a listen to the speakers. Now we are a bit away from the microphone, about one meter and a little bit more. And let's try and max out the downward firing speaker so you can hear the difference between these two units. In my book, this is a very clear win for the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. Even though these are downward firing speakers, they sound very clear and they are great when it comes to listening to music as well as when watching a movie or a TV show. However, keep in mind that if you place them on your lap when having downward firing speakers like this, it will be significantly worse audio compared to when placing them on a table like this. I am not a big fan of the audio in the IdeaPad 5i Pro, so I really can't recommend this guy for its speakers. I would have to use headphones if I would use this guy as my main driver and listen to music or watching movies on it. This is the camera of the IdeaPad 5i Pro in a pretty well lit environment. This is also the microphone of the IdeaPad 5i Pro, so you can hear how that one fares. This is the camera of the Yoga Slim 7i Pro, and this is also the microphone of it, so you can hear how that one fares. So which one would I choose when I get the choice? Of course, in this case, I use my method of keeping them both at my desk or keeping them both at my table at home and seeing which one I naturally gravitate towards when it's time to leave home and I need to bring a laptop. And in this case, it is an easy win for the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. This is my preferred choice because it has a great form factor that I really enjoy. The 14 inch is great together with 16 by 10 aspect ratio and it has that two Thunderbolt ports with full display port out compatibility which is really good for me in some of my use cases. If I want to edit a video I will definitely gravitate towards the IdeaPad 5i Pro because it has the full-size SD card reader, which makes it so much easier to import the footage. And this has really made me realize how much I miss having an SD card reader in the Yoga Slim 7i Pro. I haven't missed the HDMI port that much, and I haven't used the HDMI port that much on the IdeaPad 5i Pro. But the SD card reader I have used every single day with the IdeaPad. So that is one thing I truly appreciate in stepping up to a bit of a more broader port collection in the IdeaPad. Which one of these laptops you prefer is of course a very personal choice, but I've tried to cover a few of the differences and similarities so that you can make an as informed choice as possible. If you have any other questions about these two laptops and how they compare, please ask them in the comments below. I'm usually very active there. Have a really nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.